This is a 15 year old girl with a solitary plaque on the scalp. Let's see if we can uh, get that a little bit more right side up. Nope. Okay, that's good enough. When they're at an angle like this, sometimes it's hard. But uh, what I want to point out, first of all, is look, we're on the scalp. The scalp has, unless the person's older and, and has alopecia, um, that it has very large, uh, what we call antigen. These are antigen hairs that are in the antigen stage. The main thing though is that they have their roots down in the subcutis, okay? So the scalp, also the sideburn area, you have large hairs, many large hairs, and their roots are down in the subcutis. And you can see that on both edges of this excision, there are large hairs, and then suddenly the hair is gone. On the scalp, we shouldn't have a zone where there's total loss of hair. That's not normal, right? Certainly not normal here for this young girl. Um, and you can see that there's also the epidermis, the normal epidermis here suddenly becomes very thickened. Acanthotic is what we call that, thickening of the spinous layer. And not only that, but it becomes undulating and papillomatous. And here it really resembles a wart or a verruca. Sometimes it can resemble seborrheic keratosis. The other thing that I want to point out, so we have epidermal, acanthosis, and papillomatosis, looking like either a verruca or a seb. That's point number one. Point number two is we have large sebaceous glands. And these sebaceous glands, normally sebaceous glands drain into an adjacent hair follicle, but not these. These, most of them at least, drain directly through their duct out to the skin surface. So that's abnormal. And look, we've got a bonus here. There's a little demodex mite. These are, um, as you probably have seen, if you've seen any skin on the head and neck, you'll know that these are really common and they live in the openings of hair follicles as well as in the sebaceous duct, depending on what species of demodex. And for the most part, they don't cause any problems, although I, I occasionally encounter people online that insist that it's causing all sorts of health problems for them. But, but in my experience, at least, these are you know, basically skin flora that are just kind of hanging out there, eating the sebum that's coming out of these sebaceous glands. And occasionally they can exacerbate rosacea or cause some sort of a, a hypersensitivity, but it seems like most of the time people do not have problems with them. Okay, so anyway, that's just a little side topic, but but uh, people are often curious about Demodex mites, and they're very, very common. I see them multiple times a day in my practice. But here are the big sebaceous glands, very nice, mature, benign sebaceous glands, but they're draining directly to the surface of the skin instead of to hair follicles. And then number three, and you don't always have this, but, I, but this one has it nicely, which is why it's one of my favorite examples of this entity. Look at these glands. They're tangled together like eccrine glands, which is the normal gland that makes a little coil in the skin. Um, but these cytologically don't look like eccrine glands. Eccrine glands normally look a little bit more like this. These actually have very abundant pink kind of grainy cytoplasm, large round nuclei. These look like apocrine glands or apocrine. I kind of go back and forth in the way I pronounce it. I'm not sure what the right way is, and I don't even remember which way I pronounce it because I say it both ways. So in any case... Um, and then here, well, they kind of look apocrine, apocrine, but they also kind of look eccrine. So people have called these apoecrine glands. They're basically like eccrine coils, but have some apocrine cytology, okay? And it's a very characteristic finding. You don't always see it, but it's characteristic. So putting these three things together and that this is a plaque without hair on the scalp of a child, this is a nevus sebaceous. And please note that the name sebaceous, even though there are sebaceous glands, it is not spelled like normal sebaceous. It lacks the O. It's got C-E-U-S at the end. Why? Probably it goes back to Latin and, and something that I probably have forgotten since my year of college Latin about declensions and how they should align with adjectives, but I don't remember. And I'm sorry, Dr. Schuler. I hope my professor can forgive me for that. In any case, it is a very important point that the derms will notice if you use the O because the O is not supposed to be there, okay? So I like to poke fun at my derm colleagues about that. But in any case... Nevis sebaceous, despite the name, is one of those diseases that has the word nevis in the name, but does not have anything to do with melanocytes. And that's because the Latin word nevis basically means birthmark, okay? So, of course, a lot of birthmarks are congenital nevi, but also you can have vascular lesions as birthmarks, and you can have nevis sebaceous, which is actually a form of hamartoma, an abnormal arrangement of the normal structures of the skin. The sebaceous glands are there, but they're they're more abundant and they open to the surface. The epidermis is kind of proliferative. The, the sweat glands are kind of abnormal and, and often have some apocrine cytology. Here's a good example, too, of, of ones that look more like regular eccrine over here. 
well, kind of still have a little bit of the apocrine. These are more like regular uh, eccrine coils. And then in contrast, the ones over here are those more apocrine slash eccrine um, structures. So in fact, anytime I see apocrine glands on the scalp, um, I'm going to instantly think of nevus sebaceous because you don't normally have apocrine glands on the scalp. Normally, apocrine glands are in the axilla and in the anogenital skin. You also see them at the margin of the eyelids, the glands of mole, M-O-L-L, -L, and you can see them around the nipple. And really, those are the main places that you normally see apocrine glands unless I'm forgetting one of them. So if I see them in skin elsewhere, I instantly think of nevus sebaceous. Or another disease which is closely related to nevus sebaceous is called epidermal nevus. Basically, if you have this epidermal kind of proliferation and it's been present since birth, and take away the sebaceous glands and the apocrine slash eccrine glands, then I would call it an epidermal nevus, which is another benign hamartoma that's closely related to nevus sebaceous. And usually the scalp is where you see these, but you can see them elsewhere on the face, and occasionally I even have seen them on the trunk or other sites. The clinical history can be really important because these should be present since birth, although they tend to grow and change during puberty, and that's because the hormones during puberty start to stimulate the sebaceous glands to grow and enlarge. If you see these in a young child, You'll have all the findings here, but the, the sebaceous glands usually are very small and very indistinct. They'll often look like this. You'll just have a few little kind of immature sebaceous glands like these guys, and you won't have these large pale ones that are filled up with lipid. Those usually develop in puberty or later. And occasionally you can have a variety of adnexal tumors grow in the midst of nevus sebaceous. That's a topic for a different day. Most of them are benign, although very rarely you can see true basal cell carcinomas. Usually instead you see trichoblastomas and other benign hair follicle tumors and some benign sweat gland tumors like syringocystadenoma papilliferum, which tend to grow in the background of nevus sebaceous. And very, very rarely you can see true malignancies, but I, in my experience that's, that's quite rare in, in actuality. Even though it's well reported in the literature, it's very rare. Okay, so and these are usually yellowish, kind of greasy looking plaques that usually lack hair. And so when you get a nice excision like this, I find the loss of hair, the hair suddenly goes away and then comes back on the other side of the lesion to be a very characteristic, helpful finding to support a diagnosis of nevus sebaceous. And here's just another, another look at this lesion here, a really, really classic one. Case eight.